What's going on, everybody? Dan with the Fastest 40 here. Trey may or may not join us for this episode. We'll kind of see what's going on with the technical issues, but uh, at the very least, you know, we're going to talk about that unfortunate Sunday night football game against the Green Bay Packers. We dropped another one, fourth loss of the year for our Kansas City Chiefs, 27 to 19. Uh, still a one possession loss. Most of the losses in the Mahomes Reed era have come by just one possession. And I mean, it speaks to, you know, the quality of the team, obviously, how well we're able to stay in these games. But, you know, a loss is, is never one that's fun to talk about. So we'll see if Trey joins us um, a little bit later in this episode. Later this week, when we do our preview for the Buffalo Bills, I will be out, but we're going to have a sub. Our good friend Brock and Trey, they're going to talk you guys through everything going into our week 14 matchup with the Buffalo Bills. So that's going to be a make or break game. So a little bum that not going to be there with you guys for that one, but um, we can go ahead and start with player of the game. Not that there's really many people to highlight here. Uh, no, nothing spectacular from our wide receivers. We had a couple flashes from Travis Kelsey. Mahomes had a very mediocre night, uh, to tell you the truth. And then the defense, we didn't really have a ton of standouts. I'm throwing the player of the game to Harrison Butker because he was able to maintain that perfect kicking record, you know, knock on wood, uh, perfect on those extra points, perfect on his field goals. A couple of drives were stunted. I'll get more into that a little bit later when we talk about the lack of efficiency in the red zone. The only other person that I would even highlight for this position or this title here from this game is Isaiah Pacheco. But when you throw a punch and you know we lose those 15 yards on that on that final drive, no timeouts, pushes us to midfield. I mean, that was honestly a killer and not having a player of his caliber on the field hurts as well with him getting ejected. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely a bummer there. Uh, but Harrison Butker, man, keep doing what you're doing. Been pretty awesome to watch you, watch you work, watch you kick. So, um, definitely giving him the honors there. <clears throat> we'll move it into the game. Um, give a quick shout out to better homes and gardens, obviously Katie Lawrence, being the driving force there, handling real estate here in the Kansas City area, selling, buying, helping you find the the dream home for you and your family. She's going to make sure she gets it done. You can reach out to her at 816-883-2425 or send her an email, Katie, K-A-T-I, Lawrence at KansasCityHomes.com. That's where you can check her out and... uh you know, she'll she'll make sure you get taken care of in the real estate side of things. <clears throat> As we dive into the game, you know, I want to highlight something because initially, right when we got, right when, you know, the game ends on that Hail Mary play, the crew, Tariko, Collinsworth, Collinsworth, by the way, it seemed like he didn't know what the hell he was talking about half the time, still hung over from Thanksgiving or something, but they were so hyper focused on the officiating in that Hail Mary play. And I really don't think that should have been the talking points at the end of the game. The officiating obviously was terrible, very inconsistent. Luckily, you know, podcasters, talking heads like myself, we can criticize the officials without getting any repercussions like the players and coaches do, or else I think they would certainly have their way with it. But the officiating was atrocious. Um, that being said, that is not the reason that the Chiefs lost that game to the Green Bay Packers last night. And I'll go into a lot more about what the root cause of that was, in my opinion. But, man, the officiating definitely didn't help us on that final drive. Um, MVS <laughs> basically carrying... Packers defender on his back piggyback style. Um, there was the the late hit on Mahomes. I thought was a bad call, even though it played out in our favor. Not that we didn't give those yards right back with Isaiah Pacheco throwing that punch. Um, there were a couple other missed DPIs, some soft holding calls, um, just really bad. And then, you know, they interviewed that crew after the fact, and 
<laughs> and they basically stood their ground on on how poor they officiated it. So um, all of that being said about the officials, just because it's true doesn't mean it is the reason why the Chiefs lost, because I, I wholeheartedly do not believe that the officials are the reason we lost. The Chiefs are the reason why the officials became so impactful at the end of the day. Um, they didn't execute. They didn't execute on offense or defense, and we can go into that in a little bit. Um, T. Swift, T. Swift made her way out to Green Bay, so we saw her and Simone Biles, so uh, two high-profile uh, girlfriends slash wives. I know Simone Biles and and Jonathan Owens, they're married. Pretty cool seeing uh, seeing all the stars come out for that game and any game really uh, when you're able to m merge the world of of football with uh, some of these other worlds like uh, the Olympics, which are coming up here soon. Crazy to even say that, but uh, first loss with T Swift in attendance for a game. So I mean, you can pretty much hopefully we don't talk about you know uh, records whenever she's in the house or. Um, how many games that we win when Taylor Swift's in attendance because the record's tarnished now. We can throw that topic out the window. This will be the last time I hope we talk about any kind of uh, streak or anything like that. I think more impactful was not having Mitch Holtis there calling the game. Um, you know, he went down with COVID. At least that's what I heard on uh, the pregame show with Art Haynes. So that was that was definitely tough not to not to you know, have him out there. I'm sure Dane and, and the rest of the guys were able to get it done on the broadcast. I was watching, um, watching the Sunday night football game. So I didn't get to tune in there, but first game that I can remember, I don't know. We'd have to check back on the record there. Uh, first game that I can remember where Mitch Holtis was not calling that one for the radio for the listeners. So, um, hopefully he's feeling better. I think that definitely, I don't know. I'm a little superstitious, so I think that definitely impacted a little bit. But uh, we can jump into the defense here to start because the defense has been the godsend for this team, right? They've been the bailout. They've been the reason why we've won the vast majority of our games. Scoring is way, way down on the offense. But luckily, the defense has been to play to that a little bit and keep scoring down on their end as well. <clears throat> I will say this was probably the worst defensive effort that we've gotten from our, our defense so far this year. Again, just like the Raiders game, we let their offense get hot early. The difference is we didn't make the proper adjustments to limit them in the second half like we did with the Raiders. So Jordan Love kept it rolling. I think Jordan Love played about as close to a perfect game as it gets. Let me pull up some some numbers here. Jordan Love in that game, 267 yards, almost 70% completion, and three touchdowns, no picks. That's by far his best stat line of the year. I mean, maybe you could look to the Lions game a week ago for something comparable. But he has not played a game that effectively uh, in the 2023 calendar year. So we allowed him to do that. Those receivers for Green Bay, really, really a young team overall. They talked about a little bit on the broadcast. But, you know, our, our defense, while they're also young, they feature a lot more prominent veterans, guys that are experienced that really should be Applying the pressure on Jordan Love, their their offensive tackles aren't really all that great with Bakhtiari being out there. We should have been able to handle the edge a little bit better. We should have been able to handle the run game a little bit better. A.J. Dillon was running roughshod all over us, uh, just constant pounding anytime our guys would try and tackle him. And it even took out Drew Tranquil there in the game very early on, so... I think a big piece of what we were missing was a little bit of that that leadership, the ability to to call out the looks that you're seeing from the offense, run the plays for the defense, and get things going on a communication level. Not having Tranquil, not having Bolton in there, uh, we really didn't have anybody step up to fulfill that role. 
as uh, as we were taking on the Packers last night. So not forcing any pressure. We got a couple sacks late, but nothing to really make Jordan Love feel uncomfortable. He definitely felt at home uh, in the pocket there. <clears throat> and then the wide receivers, they were doing him all kinds of favors. <laughs> I mean, they're very young receiving group, very inexperienced, but at any given time when we saw a completion there, I mean, there was like three or four yards of separation. And I don't know if it's that we were running a certain packet, like zone package that they were just picking apart. If our man coverage was just that bad, what the situation was, I have no idea. But they were they were getting they were doing their job. They were executing better than our defense was. Our our safeties were getting beat deep. We had linebackers covering receivers in various plays. Uh, Leo Chanel missed a key tackle on a third down situation that ended up resulting in Brian Cook dislocating his ankle in a gruesome way. Luckily, you know, no broken bones. MRI came back relatively clean for the most part. He did have some surgery, but they're not they're not expecting him to miss the rest of the season, which I think is is huge for him. So we're going to get some Mike Edwards time moving forward, but missing Tranquil, missing Brian Cook, and then later in the game, as we get to the offense here in a little bit, uh, we had Donovan Smith go out with that stinger that he's been dealing with. <clears throat> but losing those two pieces, not having Nick Bolton out there at the same time, Charles Amenehu went down for a little bit. I think it was kind of a situation where maybe he just got the, the wind knocked out of him. But the injury bug caught up with us a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. And I don't know if that was the sole reason the Packers were able to execute the way that they were, but it definitely helped them out a ton. Not having, you know, our premier linebackers back there. I was really hoping Willie Gay was going to step up and force some pressure. Uh, Would have loved to see Chris Jones make some more impact plays there. I don't think it was for lack of trying for the defense, but we just didn't execute in the right way uh, at the end of the day. And I know I'm going to be beating a dead horse about how you execute your plays and you get things going on both sides of the ball. But I mean, at the end of the day, we just didn't get it done that way. I'll, uh, I'll take it easy on the defense here moving forward. I think, you know, they get a pass. They can have a bad game. The offense, however, they've had several bad games and, I think you can chalk this one up to a bad performance from our offense as well. Now, I mentioned it earlier, Isaiah Pacheco, he played relatively well uh, throughout most of the game, was running at will. In the second half, hour, however, uh, Pacheco got just one tote on the three possessions that we had. We basically went three and out, came back through the pick, didn't get a chance to run then. And by the time we got the ball again, it was five minutes left in the game. And we're having a scramble to go get some points. Three minutes left in the game. We're scrambling to get points. So uh, on that drive, he ends up throwing the punch, gets ejected. You got to keep your composure in that situation, man. I mean, how many times throughout the game has a defender, you know, lifted lifted themselves off of you to get off the ground or been a little aggressive with you and you waited until the worst possible time to react the way you did. I mean, you just got to keep your composure out there and I'm sure he feels the same way. I'm sure if you were able, you were to ask Isaiah Pacheco how he felt about that play, he would say that he would change it. He would change the way he was doing things. <clears throat> so, really unfortunate to see him leave leave that game. Travis Kelsey he was getting open on a few different plays, but in the in the key moments, we didn't get a ton of him. I think we got a key third down conversion there uh, during the game. Other than that, he was kind of a ghost. We were throwing the ball more to basically any other receiver other than Travis Kelsey when he should have been that key guy on that drive. Um, just didn't get it. Just didn't get the ball to him. Mahomes was getting flushed out of the pocket a few different times, had to roll out. Um, there was a 
that key interception that resulted in points for the Green Bay Packers to Sky Moore, where you know the route just wasn't run to its fullest extent. He didn't really run hard. With Sky Moore getting the second most reps and only catching one pass for five yards and the other target resulting in an interception, I think you can kind of take the common denominator there, add two with two, and adjust your snap counts for these wide receivers. Rasheed Rice made some key plays. His average depth of target was just one yard, but he was able to turn the yards after catch in and make it something impactful. So, I mean, you know, while we, while we can look at execution for a lot, a lot of our other players, the play calling didn't do our playmakers any favors either. So, I mean, it was just a top to bottom offensive effort that just totally fell apart throughout that game. And, and in key moments, taking Rasheed Rice out on a critical third and nine play where we ultimately ended up, you know, settling for a field goal. We've had, we had several penalties, Jawan Taylor repeat offender in that game with holding, or uh, I think he had a false start in there as well. Uh, Just nonstop undisciplined play from our offense. And it's really just not what you would expect from an Andy Reid led offense at all. Not at all. <clears throat> Usually these guys are more disciplined. Usually they clean up their mistakes if that discipline unwinds a little bit for a game. The ball security was better. I'll give them that. We didn't get the fumbles, right? We did get the interception, unfortunately, uh, due to what seemed like miscommunication or or maybe even lack of effort on that particular route. And it ultimately costs us, you know, anytime we talk about what's going to beat the Chiefs, we say it's going to be the Chiefs. It's going to be this or that. It's going to be, you know, poor performance in the red zone, which we got plenty of that. The first two drives were identical. Absolutely identical. We march down the field. We get inside the 20. We get to that third down situation. Penalty brings us back. And then we get sacked on that third down, that third and long. Settle for the field goal. Those first two drives, we left eight points on the board. And, oh, would you look at that? We lost by eight points. And then if we take it a step further, we finally score that touchdown. We go for the two. We fail that two-point conversion. We turn those first two drives into touchdowns instead of field goals. We don't even have to go for that two-point conversion. We're sitting at 21. Everything else holds the same. We end that game 28-27. And we're taking the ball down the field in a totally different fashion in those final ticks. I know that's under the assumption that everything else would remain the same. Uh, Maybe the Packers would play a little more aggressively in their final possessions. But that was the difference in the game. It was those two drives. Those two drives where we faltered in the red zone. So we took every ingredient to a Chiefs loss, mixed it up together, and we got this Packers game with a Jordan Love that actually performed really well. So, I mean, I don't want to take anything away from what he was able to do. He was really impressive. Jordan Love was really impressive in that game. But man, you can't beat a quality quarterback, someone who's playing out of their mind, by falling short in the red zone your first two tries, throwing an interception late in the game, and stacking penalties against yourself. It's just never going to come out the way you want it to. It's never going to come out the way you want it to. Um, The Ravens, they won the bye week, right? They get to keep that one seed. We lose out on that spot. We were hoping to to maintain that. That's not going to be the case now. Now we got to fight a little bit harder. We got to win out, control what we can control. 
I mean, we talked about it last week, the schedules for these other AFC teams. They're a little bit harder than what we've got. But we do have Buffalo coming to town next week, right? That's not going to be a cakewalk. The, those guys are fighting for their life, too. They're 6-6. Six and six. They're a, a game out from a wild card spot. A couple of, uh, couple of jobs were done for them. With the Steelers losing, everybody's sitting in the wild card right now at seven and five, so they're just game back. The Chiefs got got some work to do. They they need a statement win next week, which I'll let Trey sort of talk about what that's going to look like. But you know, the AFC is creeping up on on Kansas City right now. Houston got a win. Uh, they moved to seven and five Colts are seven and five Browns and Steelers also seven and five after the weekend's events are, are all wrapped up. The Ravens sit at nine and three winning that bye week. Of course, Jaguars are fighting to, uh, move up in their rankings. Currently they sit at the two seed dolphins, nine and three. They got a handy win over Washington commanders. Tyree kill looking pretty good over there in Miami. Missing him a little bit from the wide receiver room that we have now. Obviously, the defense uh, makes it a good trade. I'd take Karloftis and McDuffie for that. But those wild card teams, man, they're 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 game back on Kansas City right now. Uh, you know, we've lost two out of the last three. Dropped one to to Philly. Didn't look good in the Raiders game until the second half. Until we made adjustments. And after Buffalo, <clears throat> we still have the Chargers on the schedule. Last game of the year. They are probably going to be playing for something, fight for something. And with the position that we're in now, we may have to suit up. Get our starters out there for for week 18. Which is not something that I think any of us had in the cards uh, three weeks ago. So... Yeah, I mean, that's not an ideal situation. I guess if you have to put a silver lining around it, it was to an NFC team that we lost. So, uh, you know, it wasn't a double-up situation where the AFC is gaining, gaining two games or game and a half or whatever the case is on us there, but not ideal. Not ideal at all. Uh, before we wrap up, I do want to give a quick shout-out to the Atlas Saloon. They are big time partners and sponsors of the, sh of the show. They've been in Excelsior Springs for quite a while, brewing beer since 2018. Uh, we are going to do a live show out there for the Patriots game. Uh, that got flexed to Sunday at noon. So we'll be out there pretty early, about 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, make sure you head, head, make your way out there, have your red gear on, have your Chiefs gear on. Patriots are a lot. <laughs> are a lot easier of a team to to manage than the Packers, hopefully. And, uh, you know, we come out with a dub there. But um, we'll be back, like I said earlier in the show, later in the week with uh, with with Trey and with Brock to talk about the, the Buffalo Bills preview. And, you know, hopefully hopefully Andy Reid gets these guys gets these guys right this week, writes the ship does something to instill some confidence in the other wide receivers, not name Rasheed Rice, because they need it. I mean, they just look defeated. MVS on several plays looked like he didn't want to be there. Sky Moore looked clueless, looked lost. Justin Watson disappeared. Thank God for Noah Gray catching a touchdown. Um, would love to see him get involved more. There's just a lot that we could be doing. To, to right the ship, and I think it starts with running the offense through your playmakers a little more instead of forcing, you know, double reverses to Kadarius Tony or, you know, working in Sky Moore just to try and get him going. I'd honestly be more happy to see Richie James come in and get some play, put him to the test. But, um, yeah, I'll take a step back. I'll, I'll I'll cool off a little bit more from from this loss. The season's not over. Seen a lot of dramatics on Twitter or X or and social media. You know, throw the talent, those kinds of things. I'm not on that train. Obviously, our defense has been really great. We're regressing a little bit towards the mean with how great the defense has been at this point. Hopefully, the offense 
progresses towards what they could be or what they should be. Um, but the season's not over. As long as we've got 15 under center healthy, 87 healthy, defense holding teams to 24 points or less on average, and Andy Reid calling the plays, I'll take our chances over 31 other teams any day of the week. So, sky's not falling. Let's not beat ourselves up too much, but damn, they got to fix it. Chiefs got to fix it. So, until then, uh, appreciate everybody listening. Definitely keep your eyes open for any more news or pieces coming out about our live show here in town. And, um, you know, I'll see you guys next week after the Bills game. Trey and Brock will take care of you until then. So, as always, go Chiefs. Peace out.